Salem State University, Salem, Massachusetts. The Bowditch Hall residence is reputed to be the campus' most haunted building, largely down to the mysterious activity that has allegedly taken place in room 222, when a story was made up, about a triple student murder, supposedly committed in the room in the 1970s, little did anyone know that the ghost, or ghosts, the tale spawned would come to life, with such persistence. If reports are to be believed, noisy banging sounds can be heard from within the walls of the space, yet strangely, despite their volume, they can't be detected outside. Perhaps more terrifying is the shaking of room 222's bed, a phenomenon that has apparently been violent enough to throw occupants onto the floor. So far, no one has been able to explain the animated spirit's motives. University of Southern Maine, Portland, Maine The University of Southern Maine's Roby Andrews Residence Hall was built in two parts, the first constructed in 1897 and the second in 1916 and it wasn't long into its history that the building is said to have acquired a ghost. A student, so the story goes, fell pregnant and, possibly unable to live with the repercussions. Subsequent inhabitants have reportedly heard eerie footsteps and, felt peculiar temperature changes. This may not just be down to the unfortunate girl, though, as some students believe that at least four other spirits reside in Roby Andrews. Occupants there have also allegedly experienced their possessions, being mysteriously reshuffled and the sensation of being grasped. Still, such uncanny goings-on haven't deterred the Portland dorm, from arranging a full program of residence events, including the telling of ghost tales in the attic, where those eerie footsteps are supposed to have been detected. Kansas State University, Manhattan, Kansas Kansas State University's Memorial Stadium has been the site of the Manhattan School's most enduring ghostly urban legend for half a century. In the 1950s, the parents of a Kansas State student known only as Nick supposedly perished in an automobile accident on their way to see their son play a football game in the stadium. Meanwhile, Nick was on the receiving end of a brutal tackle during the game, and died from his injuries in the stadium's refectory. Since his death, Nick apparently still wanders the scene of his demise, looking for his mom and dad. And while no one claims to have actually seen his spirit, people have reported witnessing floating fire extinguishers spurting foam, and mysteriously moving wooden boxes. Interestingly, the Purple Mask Theater is also based in the stadium, and the apparition of a Confederate soldier has reportedly been spotted on its stage. The University of Vermont, Burlington, Vermont In the mid-20th century, a medical student reportedly hanged himself in a residential building close to the University of Vermont's Burlington campus. Shortly after his death, the story states, the deceased's roommates reported experiencing visions of being treated by a stethoscope wearing doctor at night. Then, mysteriously, medical recommendations allegedly began appearing beside their beds, seemingly written by the ghost of Dr. Jack. Joseph Citro, author of the Vermont Ghost Guide, has also reported uncovering instances of paranormal activity at a number of campus buildings including Converse Hall, which is believed to be frequented by the ghost of another former medical student, Henry, as he's called, is held to have killed himself in the building in the 1920s, and his spirit's habits are more mischievous than those attributed to Dr. Jack. Apparently Henry has a penchant for playing with windows and doors, and both students and staff have told of lights inexplicably turning back on after they've switched them off. University of Tennessee, Knoxville. The McClung Museum of Natural History and Culture is located on the University of Tennessee System's Knoxville campus. Legend has it that the museum was constructed above a Native American cave, and that the previous inhabitants still wander its halls. 
Something altogether more terrifying, though, is said to occupy Hess Hall, built in 1962. The building was the scene of an apparent student suicide in the 1970s, and the deceased's tormented spirit can reportedly be heard shrieking even now. In 2010 one former student also described a vision he saw from his fraternity house in the late 1970s. I looked out the window, and saw an elderly lady walking down the street, Dr. Bill DeWeese explained to university publication Torchbearer. Suddenly, this black bull comes charging up behind her and runs over the top of her. I called the packing house across the river, and was told no bovine had escaped. Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa Originally constructed in 1927, Iowa State University's Frilly Hall is perhaps the Ames School's scariest building. Indeed, one of its rooms has been nicknamed as Satan's Legion. In 2014, student Sterling DeLoached Old, the Des Moines Register that a former resident once committed suicide in the creepily named room, adding that anybody who has subsequently moved in, either dies or goes missing, apparently. The situation became so bad that the room was permanently closed, though this may actually have been for fire safety reasons. Elsewhere on campus, Gold Star Hall, which was opened in 1928, and honors the memory of more than 500 alumni killed, in military conflicts, since the onset of World War I, has its own spooky history. Among the dearly departed was a solitary woman, home economics graduate, Hortense Elizabeth Wind whose lonely ghost is said to roam the building, possibly searching for another female to chat to. Miami University, Oxford, Ohio Helen Peabody, the former principal of the Western College for Women, was considered a severe woman. One of her notable gripes was men from neighboring Miami University, soliciting the attentions of the young ladies, attending the school, she presided over from 1855 to 1888. Following Peabody's death in 1905, the Oxford, Ohio Women-Only Institutions Seminary Hall was rechristened Peabody Hall in her honor. Quite what the woman herself would have made of the school, merging with Miami University in 1974 is anybody's guess, but the behavior of her purported ghost in the building, bearing her name gives a reasonably clear indication some believe that the principal continues to protect Peabody Hall's women residents by haunting the men there. What's more, her portrait, which hangs in the building's foyer, apparently blinks when people guilty of acts she would have frowned upon walk it. Texas State University, San Marcos, Texas Ghost tours are offered to freshmen arriving at Texas State University, presumably to warn them about what to potentially expect during their time, at the school's spooky San Marcos campus. One tale centers on formidable-looking Old Main, which was opened in 1903. Legend has it that a student plummeted from the Gothic building's third floor, while renovation work was underway. Meanwhile, something more sinister is said to have taken place at Pi Kappa Alpha Fraternity House, where during an initiation ceremony a number of years ago, a group of new members were purportedly killed. When investigators from ghost hunting group Weird US paid the building a visit, prior to it succumbing to a fire in 2007, they described observing the words help me and I'm sorry scratched into kitchen worktops, not to mention vanishing bloody handprints on the walls. University of Notre Dame. In 2004 the Travel Channel's Haunted Campuses show rolled onto the University of Notre Dame's Indiana campus. The production team must surely have been hoping to catch a sighting of the ghost of George Gipp, a college football superstar who competed for Notre Dame from 1917 until his death in 1920. The Gipper, as he was affectionately dubbed, lost his fight with pneumonia at the age of just 25, and legend has it that he still relives his university days in spirit, formed by haunting Washington Hall, his old residence. 
interest in Gyps Ghost hasn't gone away, either. Former chemical engineering undergraduate Bryce Chung set up the Notre Dame Ghost Tour, which attracted 100 eager ghost hunters for Halloween 2008. Chung himself claims to have had a chilling experience in the school's South Dining Hall, when a radio seemingly switched itself on of its own accord. I wasn't going to stand around long enough to find out what that was, he explained after the eerie incident. University of South Florida, Tampa, Florida. Former University of South Florida librarian Paul Camp is thought to have been fond of telling students about the spirit of a troubled young girl that supposedly haunts the Tampa School's library. An English student called Gottlieb is said to have worked on the library's fourth floor, but she reportedly took her own life towards the end of 1976. Since then, her green rucksack-wearing ghost has apparently appeared fleetingly, and while sightings are few and far between, the girl's spectral presence still seems to spook people. You always get the eerie feeling you're being watched and get that paranoid sense of someone behind you, walking through the library, explained then psychology major A.S.A. Semp in 2010. Meanwhile, Semp's friend, Brianna McLennathan, music major at the time, imparted that she once became unsettled, while looking for a text. Others have reported seeing book carts move of their own accord, and automatic doors mysteriously opening.